I'm Murray Carter. Welcome to Carter Cutlery's High Performance Tips. We're at Douglas Ridge Rifle Club in Estacada, Oregon with world champion rifle shooter Stampate. Today we've come to the 300 yard berm where we're going to test three different rifles. A precision target rifle and a hunting rifle and an AR-15. We're going to see how they shoot out to 300 yards. Then we're going to move back to 600 yards and see which of those rifles is still in the game. Then we're going to go all the way back to a thousand yards and give whatever rifles left our best shot. I'm going to touch a little bit on wind reading too, Murray. See the orange flag down there? Can you feel the change ups on your face? Yeah. Can you feel it now? What we want to do is get you properly behind your rifle. You're using a, a full supine position, so you're good there. Now you've got a 100 yard zero and you said with your suppressor you're shooting six inches low at 100. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold that six minutes low, six minutes, six inches where it, where it comes out to six minutes at 100 yards. So we're going to hold that and we're going to come you up, bring you a come up from eight and a half minutes from your 100 yard zero. Okay, there's eight and a half. Okay, so that's what we're going to shoot at. We're going to try your first round. What I'm going to do is sit behind you with a spotting scope and spot your shot so I can see where your shot goes. Okay. Okay. First shot of the day. Ready when you are, sir. Okay, you're high up in the nine ring about 11 o'clock. Okay. You need to come right about a half minute and down about one minute. Let me try another shot for windage without adjusting anything. Okay, well the windage is, right now your windage came up a little stronger right out of the left. Okay. Good to go. You're good to go, sir. Just out of the X-ring, about 10.30. Okay, so we do need to adjust the windage. Yes, so you do. You need to come down about one quarter minute and right about, uh, I'd come right about at least a half minute. Uh, now I'm making a quarter of the winds changed up. Very consistent shooting. Good job, Murray. Looked, looked perfect. You see where you're at? Yeah. Left side of the X ring. If you came one quarter minute right, you'd be centered. Looked like a dead center X. We had the wind come up. Do you see the wind flag down there on the back of the 100-200? Uh, the yep. cover, you see that? See the condition it's at right now? Yep. That's the condition you just fired in. You just shot a pinwheel X. So you can use that for an indicator. If the flag drops a little bit, maybe you want to you want to hold a little bit more to the right. If it picks up a little bit more, maybe hold a little bit more to the left. Anytime you hit the spotter. Very nice. You used the center hole that time, didn't you? But you had four X's in a row. I'd call that pretty good shooting. Okay. Your position's nice. I watched when you're shooting. Your body is right in line with your rifle. And what's happening is when your rifle recoils, it comes and it settles right back down. It doesn't try to bounce off to its side. So you're really spot on with that. It looks like I was watching your grip to see if your grip came up the same way each time. And it was. Three of the biggest things that affects a shot, and obviously you've got this down, is if you change the shoulder pressure on your buttstock, or you change the position that your shoulder is resting in the buttstock, it tends to throw rounds in different places. And obviously you're, you're not having that problem. The second thing is your cheek when it touches this, uh, it's called your, your spot well or cheek well. Yeah. If you change that anywhere in there, it'll throw rounds. It affects it to a lesser degree than your buttstock pressure, but still big. And obviously you're hitting that fine. And your grip, the last thing is your grip. If you change that grip on your pistol grip in, in position or in strength, it'll throw, it'll throw it off some. Do you want to try some more? Or? 
Yeah, I want to try the uh, hunting rifle. Okay. What I'd like to do, you've indicated that you've got uh, you've got a rough zero at a, at 100 yards, so we don't really know what to, to do with the rifle here at 300 yards. So what I'd like to do is pick a safe location in the berm to where we have a very good visual all the way around it and see where your round's hitting, and we'll make an adjustment if necessary before we go to paper. Okay. Okay. To be honest, we don't want to shoot the camera equipment down there, do we? No, we don't. <laughs> okay. So why don't we do that? There's a under the left side of the number four on uh, target 14, there's a tuft of grass. Why don't you go ahead and shoot at that? Okay, I see it. Okay, and I'll watch behind the scope, and uh, if you need to make a, a change, we'll make it. If not, we'll go right to the paper. Okay, great. Good luck, Murray. Ready when you are. Okay, I'm going to aim. I know, I know that the crosshairs are dead on, or roughly dead on at 100 yards. I'm going to aim dead on with the crosshairs at that tuft of grass. I think I'll probably end up shooting low. All right, we'll see. Murray shot just a little bit low. Okay. Just like he expected. Go ahead and come up about a minute, uh, minute, minute and a half. Oh, you want to adjust the scope? Oh, you want to shoot just through the crosshairs? I thought we'd try to okay. use it without adjusting the crosshairs. Outstanding. Okay. Then move to your paper. You were about, you were about uh, say, four inches low on that shot. Four inches low. Looks like you're in there. You'd be on paper, good solid on paper. I held a center hold on the bullseye with my crosshairs that I know are sighted in for 100 yards. Okay, you, there's a spotter down at 6 o'clock. You need to make a serious elevation change. Okay, yeah. Right now you need to come up about two minutes. You want to do it on your scope or with the crosshairs? How about I hold the post of the uh, duplex right on the bullseye? Okay, we could try that. That'll be educational. Okay. Ready when you are. Look like it might have been just a little bit high. You're right at the top of the black, straight up at 12 o'clock. Okay, so I need to hold somewhere in between. You split the difference, you'll probably be right there, Murray. Okay. Looked like a perfect shot. I, uh, I framed the black of the circle. I framed the, the, uh, the circle with the crosshairs and the post of the duplex. Okay. Center V bowl. That seems to be where she likes it. You know what you did is very important for the hunter. Yeah. And this is something we didn't, you know, we didn't necessarily cut and uh, cover in the long range hunting tips. Now at this point with your 100 yard zero, you can take your rifle. You know at 300 yards, all you got to do is split from the level of your post to the level of your, of your horizontal crosshairs and you're dead on for 300 yards. So that's some excellent information to have. You can so try I'd be to curious to know at what distance the uh, the post is zeroed for. Well, why don't we try it again at 600 when we get a chance? Yeah, that'd be great. I'll okay. take one last shot. Make sure that wasn't good luck. Okay. Boy, this uh, the, the hunting version of the 300 Winchester short mag sure kicks a lot more than my <laughs> silenced uh, 13 well, pound rig over there. Well, you get what you pay for it too, though. So you're getting a lot more horsepower. Well. I'll tell you what, out of this little savage hunting rifle, which wasn't very expensive, I'm awfully pleased with the accuracy and consistency. Well, you're shooting really good. You just almost hit the spotter right at the top of it. Still in the X-ring. Okay, well.
Good shooting. I like that. Yep, Come good on. shooting. Okay, we'll try the AR now? Sure. Okay. Magazine is empty, chamber's empty. Now you'll be sure to write that information down in a notebook somewhere, won't you? Of course. <laughs> so you have it. Okay, Murray, you've done really good with those other rifles, and we're dealing with a little bit different system here. This is your AR with uh, with the EOTech on it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome sight, uh, but it's not as fine a sight as what, what you have on the other rifles. In other words, the defined aiming point. What I think we should do is to go back again to that tuft of grass there in the impact berm, yep. and we'll try to hit that again and see where we're at. And it, depending on how you call the shot, whether you call it good or not, and that'd be the last sight picture you see when the round goes off, when the rifle goes off, we might make an adjustment or we might just move right to the uh, right to the paper target. Okay. Sound reasonable? Sure. You're clear, you're hot to fire. Anytime you're ready there, Murray. That's a good shot. Right in it. Elevation looked good, looked like it might have been just a little bit left. Yeah, you were left. You were about a quarter minute high and about uh, a minute and a quarter left. You hit just a little bit below your last spotter. Man, that, that, that red dot in that EOTech practically tapes up the whole black. Yeah, and that's what you're giving up. Yeah, you're almost straight south. You'd, you'd have to move about a, a minute and a quarter to, a, to actually a minute and three quarters uh, right. But okay. the, see, that's what you're giving up with a, with a sight like this. You're actually, uh, you're giving up that defined aiming point. This is more of a combat sight. And so at 300 yards, you're not going to have the defined aiming point, but you'll have a, you'll have, you'll have, if this is meant for military use, it'll give you an area shot at, at this kind of distance, but you can do it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in the black at least. Mm -hmm. So do you want to make an adjustment or do you want to hold off on it? Yeah. Let me just uh, unload here. Safety's on. Okay. Okay. In fact, let me lock that back. Okay. Magazine check, chamber check. Okay. So we're going to have to adjust that with a coin. All I have is a Leatherman. That'll do. Thank you. So you want me to go right or left? Go right. There's one click. Uh, it's every bit of that. I'd make two. Two? Mm-hmm. Let's see, because I don't know what those are calibrated at. Yeah, Let's we see where know. it's at. We'll go ahead and leave this here. Okay. Okay, go ahead and load up load up again and then we'll try it one more time on the target. Okay, safety's on. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, I'll get back behind you on the scope. Looked a lot better. I told you I was lucky when I assembled this AR fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So with that red dot it almost requires a zen-like focus or concentration because if you focus too hard on the red dot, it's just not as fine as the crosshairs are in a scope. It isn't, but it's a two-edged sword and sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be bad. You don't have the defined aiming point that you would have with, say, a set of crosshairs in that, but what you do have is that bigger, that bigger aim, uh, aiming system, the big dot that you have to, to shoot in. Well, you describe it as a Zen aiming point, and that's exactly right. It's called, we call it getting in your bubble. And so what you have to do is you have to dig deeper into that bubble and you focus on that sight so much more minutely than you normally would that you end up shooting just as well with it. But it takes a little bit of practice, and I think you can do it. Your mechanics are good. It's just a matter of getting used to doing that. So I think that's good. Well, we've got it sighted in for 300 yards now. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see where are these 223 55 grain bullets at 3,250 feet per second are going at 600 yards, where we're going to move next. Well, we'll try it. What's going to affect you more back there is the wind on your on your projectile than, than the range. Yeah. So I know people that shoot the 223 back to over 1,200 yards. And that, that, that guy happens to be an, a, a Scotsman. But uh, uh, what affects you with the bullets designed for gas guns is the ballistic coefficient of the bullet. The wind will affect it a lot more than it will a more streamlined bullet. 
I see. So you're doing well, great. Satisfied at, at 300 yards, we we managed to get uh, my 300 Winchester short magnum uh, competition done with the silencer on target, mm -hmm. shooting consistently. We got a model 16 Savage hunting rifle on target without making any adjustment yep. to the crosshairs, just by using the distance between the crosshairs and the duplex post. And we managed to get an EOTech sight, AR-15, mm -hmm. uh, dead on at 300 yards as well. So we'll see what happens at 600. Outstanding. And that's a Carter Cutlery high performance tip.